Hey everyone, Commander Josh Hawkins here, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Elite Dangerous Horizons. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the history, lore, and other details we've learned about the Guardians, the alien race who created the ancient alien runes discovered by Commander Xdeath back in October 3302. With the introduction of Patch 2.2.03, Elite Dangerous has seen a large number of changes to the game, including some major rebalancing of ships and weapons, as well as many smaller, general tweaks and network stability fixes. But changes weren't the only thing that this patch brought us. Along with the patch came a new contract available from Ramta in the Mean System, who has found a way to decode the scan data from the obelisks found at the Ancient Alien Runes, giving us our first peek at a new alien race called the Guardians, a technologically advanced alien civilization very similar to our own in many ways. Many commanders have now returned to the Ancient Alien Runes on the promise of a massive payout with a bonus of 100 million credits for bringing back the full dataset to Ramta in order to decode and learn more about these mysterious aliens, and a treasure trove of knowledge has already been brought back about the Guardians. The data from the scanned obelisks is split into five categories which tell us about the Guardians' biology, language, culture, technology, and lore. So far, none of these datasets are complete, but let's talk about what we've already learned. Much of the background information on the Guardians is still missing. What we have to date includes information beginning around the time their early society began to split into clans, and the development of new technologies which created inequalities between the different clans, and inevitably, conflicts. Initially, these conflicts would have been resolved by a battle between different champions, but with the appearance of clans, numerical superiority eventually took over, and the practice of war began to spread. These events led to the development of weapons of mass destruction, with the highest threat being that of biological warfare. Flight systems and computers were created in order to deploy and calculate the effects of large-scale biological attacks. The spread of war had a devastating impact on the existing social system of the Guardians. The control of the population disappeared when the clans understood they would need as many troops as possible. The social model, based on cooperation, collapsed and divisions arose among the population which lasted for several centuries. Some of the clans came together in an attempt to restore peace, but they had undergone terrible ordeals during their development which resulted in genetic differences and the appearance of a redder skin, suggesting a racial element of division. They waged a war of rapid conquest, placing the whole species under their command. It was at this time that the modern society of the Guardians developed, with its rules and its balance. The new modern society of the Guardians continued to function for more than a millennia during which the old forms of cooperative progress resulted in a larger, peaceful, and happier population, but with limited space. This demographic growth could not last forever. Their society already had a wealth of astronomical research and had identified a number of accessible planets capable of guaranteeing their survival. There were many who aspired to travel through the stars and to colonize other planets, and spatial colonization became a reality. Being an ecologically friendly species, rocket technology was deemed disrespectful to the environment, so they developed giant launchers that used electromagnetic propulsion to catapult their ships into space. Cocoons of breathable gel helped pilots and passengers resist the intense gravitational forces felt during launch and served as hibernation capsules during their long journeys. Having not yet developed faster than light travel, the Guardians built three large arcs for their first interstellar colonies, quite like our own generation ships. And with almost all their resources devoted to interstellar travel and communication, it didn't take long for them to discover faster than light communications and hyperspace technology which allowed their interstellar network to develop rapidly. The Guardians had used computers for many generations, but it was only with the development of artificial intelligence that they truly entered the information age. Although their monolithic network of faster-than-light communication had already existed before the birth of AI, it was the creation of an intelligent machine and the development of nerve implants that placed this network at the heart of the society of the Guardians. This had led to rapid progress in science and technology, and as the AIs continued to develop, 
develop, it had a snowballing effect. The data retrieved from the ancient alien runes contains evidence that not all individuals wished to adopt these new technologies, and some chose not to receive the implants, which ultimately led to new forms of inequality, threatening the very foundation of their modern society. Unfortunately, they were not able to find a single answer to these changes, which only widened the gap between those who accepted the change and those who resisted it, and this resistance to the technological revolution took a religious turn. Ramta has enough information to get a clear picture of their full physical appearance. However, this has not yet been shared with the general public. What we do know is that similar to humans, the Guardians had two separate sexes and stood upright, although so far it would seem that this is the extent of our physical similarities. The Guardians were carnivorous and evolved to have blade-like forearms used to hunt their prey. These sharpened appendages were also used to slice their food into smaller pieces in order to fit it into their small mouths. Despite being technologically advanced, their need to hunt and kill prey had always been preserved. They hunted mostly in packs, and food killed during a hunting game was considered a refined dish. For the guests, it was an honor to give the prey hunted to their host, but it was customary for the latter to do the same. Food that had been hunted by a single person was even more valued, and had to be hunted without a weapon. Weapons were only used in the context of civil protection or law enforcement. Aside from being hunters, the Guardians were also very sexual in nature, since the data discovered so far is full of images and recordings, and it would appear as though they had very few taboos when it came to sex. The shape of their body encouraged sex in an upright position, but although this seems to be the most comfortable pose for them, they entertained a variety of positions, and sex was not just for procreation, but for recreation as well. However, Unlike humans, the Guardians could alter their bodies at will to become temporarily sterile, making procreation a matter of personal choice, although in order to ensure the survival of their species, they were obligated to procreate at least once in their lifetime. Newborn children were frail for a certain period of time after their birth, similar to human children, but were instead raised by the community and were placed in communal creches instead of staying with their parents. Prenatal care included genetic manipulation to remove all hereditary diseases and other complications. The basis of their communication was essentially visual, not verbal, although a written and spoken form of their language both existed. The written form of the Guardian's language is based on glyphs which evolved over time, each glyph representing a word. Glyphs seem to be able to be associated to describe complex concepts, while well, the integration of movements can also be used to add additional meaning. All glyphs are symbols and are more abstract than hieroglyphs, but it's possible to identify a simple reference based on their shape. For example, the glyph used to designate the moon shows the rising and falling moon as it appeared on the Guardian world. This seems logical since written words have more portability and durability than speech, with the visual form of communication appearing early in the development of the Guardian society from a kind of sign language that they used while hunting. The spoken language had a tonal form, similar to certain human languages, which means that the meaning of a word was determined by the manner in which it was pronounced, and variations of sounds caused different meanings. But the placement of words relative to each other could also change the meaning of a sentence. Words are only fragments of the language. The sentences illustrate the rules. And they spoke with different accents, as if there were regional variations in the sound of their words. In contrast to many of our legal systems, the fundamental laws of the Guardians do not concern individual rights, but instead focus on defining the individual's responsibilities to the society. Ramta is sure that this is another reflection of the pack mentality, where the requirements of the group supersede those of a single person. Naturally, it isn't as simple as that in practice. For example, individuals were expected to come to one another's aid if necessary. Their society was self-regulated, with each individual not only obeying the law, but also ensuring its enforcement. These values were instilled in the young as part of their education in the communal creches. 
As well as being regulated, there was still a hierarchical form of administration within the legal system. These were defined by areas of responsibility, but as with all the Guardian's social structures, everyone was expected to participate, meaning that individuals were required to fill a certain legislative role as part of their everyday life. Some of the concepts aren't completely clear, but it's believed that individuals were nominated and couldn't hold office for more than a single term. You can also tell a lot about a people from their art, and most of the Guardian's art had a religious basis, although older records also indicate that other forms of realistic and abstract art did exist. It seems that their shift to a religious society affected all aspects of their lives. From the data collected, we now know that the Guardians were not only capable of fabulous architecture, but records show that buildings, statues, monoliths, and even city layouts were a common outlet for aesthetic expression. The Guardians had a particular fascination with geometric shapes, which they used to illustrate connections between themselves and the world around them. This predilection manifested itself in their technology as well, specifically their monolithic network, which formed the backbone of most of their communications network. The monolith network was augmented by vehicle-based communication systems, personal devices, and even implants. These were designed to operate seamlessly with the network to provide ad hoc coverage, with the implants acting almost as a form of technological telepathy of sorts. In keeping with their practice of sharing knowledge, the network had few restrictions and were free of content constraints. All forms of language were compatible, and virtual entertainment with public participation was available to everyone. They may have had separate networks for administrative and military use, but all data indicates an extremely open society which made them more vulnerable at the time of social dissension. For a species that had known only short periods of war, the Guardians had developed very sophisticated means. Whole cities were protected by huge, powerful shields able to resist bombardment from space. Although their arsenals were far from being as varied as ours in terms of aerodynamics and small-class ships, their technologies were far superior in many ways, including the use of genetic and biological weapon engineering, which saw the development and deployment of extremely efficient, genetically engineered creatures for use in combat. Much like their space technology, the Guardians developed projectile weapons that used electromagnetic propulsion. Such weapons were manufactured in a range of sizes, from personal weapons to capital ship class. Generally, the Guardians used these kinetic weapons in combat, and explosives were very rarely deployed. Nuclear fission and fusion were developed during the Guardians' Astro Expansion period, but when it came to large-scale destructive weaponry, they relied on biological weapons. Predict these were of very little use against the AIs. While we haven't been able to recover all the data from the runes, what we've learned so far shares the story of a race of beings with a similar history to our own, who had spread throughout the galaxy, and whose knowledge was shared almost instantaneously throughout the society through the use of an incredibly advanced form of communications. But with such advanced technology and their civilization spread amongst the stars, one question remains. Where are they now? Did they destroy themselves in war? Or do you think that something else happened to the Guardians? Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and check out some of the other Elite Dangerous videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.